Welcome back to the wizard shop and it's been a long time since we've done a buy this not that That's what we're going to do today with Porsche Let's get started So we've had a lot of projects going on in the shop the Ferrari project and also the Trojan yacht project which is pretty much finished by now we've got a lot of little things to do on it but the the brunt of the project is done we took a boat that was not able to go on the lake and made it go on the lake and it's happy it's been beautiful so but we have been skimping on by this not that and a lot of you have made comments about that and now it's time to do another one one of the makes that we definitely have not done is Porsche and although I'm not a Porsche connoisseur I do have some very strong opinions. There's a warning ahead of time for you guys that are Porsche purists. I'm probably going to piss you off. The opinions I have are just that, opinions. They're not based on Motor Trend track times. They're not based on Motor Week magazine or numbers or engineering documents. I'm not going off of that. I'm just going off of what I've seen by running a shop, what I like and what I don't like. I'm also not basing these opinions on the reliability of your car. This are the ones that I've seen in the shop and the ones that I would buy and the ones that I would not buy. And before we get started, just remember on the weekends we're changing our video from a Saturday video to a Sunday video, which really isn't that big of a change. But just to let you guys know that that change is happening. Mrs. Wizard is starting school again. She's back on the job. Well, I guess she's been on the job all summer, just a different job. But, uh, so keep that in mind. So we're going to do this by decades, 70s, 80s, 90s, and whatnot. We're going to choose one to buy and one not to buy of a particular decade. So we'll start off with the 1970s. And the reason being is I've not seen a lot of 1950s and 60s Porsches in the shop. Those are so expensive and they're usually out in California or something. They're not running around in Kansas. And the one I recommend to buy is 1974 Porsche 911. RS 3.0. This is arguably one of the best Porsches of the 1970s. Extremely powerful. And it's not turbo. It's naturally aspirated. One of the really cool features about this car is during the 70s, of the cars that were available in the 70s, it would outrun most of the Ferraris and Lambos. And didn't need a turbo, it didn't need a supercharger. It was a very cool car. The 0 to 60 was 4.8, and the quarter mile was in the 14s. Now, it was just barely into the 14s, but for the 70s, that was amazing. Like I've mentioned before in the past, most of our cars that we thought were so fast, SS396 and this and that and 428s and 429, really they weren't that fast. This Porsche could outrun a lot of them, especially in 0 to 60. One of the articles I was recently reading made a comment that as far as naturally aspirated goes, it was the highest horsepower that Porsche had made during these years. You guys know when, when it comes to Porsche, even though there's the 911, there's like 50 different 911s. And you, I mean, it's just this one and that one and this one and this special model and this and that. And that. Of those models, it was the highest horsepower naturally aspirated. It's also a very sought after car. So if I was back in the 70s and I was swimming in money, I would definitely go plunk down the cash for an RS 3.0 911. The one I recommend not to buy is any of the Porsche 914s. These things are horrible, they're hideous, they, they look horrible, and they're not fast, they're really, really bad. 85 horsepower! That's not very much power, guys. A 1987 Ford Escort has that much power. I know because I used to own one. They have very low resale value. Porsches right now, especially some of these, are just through the roof. The 914s have never been through the roof. They still are very expensive to repair. They have a very uninspiring design. To me, it's a reminiscent of a lot of the 70s VW kit cars. Kind of like the myers Manx idea where you put a fiberglass body onto a Volkswagen frame or a structure. And they had all kinds of weird fiberglass body kits during those years. Some of them look like a Manx, some of them look like a sports car. To me, it reminds me of that. Just, just like, no, I'm, that's not a Porsche. And I'll ask a question to you guys. Do any of them run? 
because everyone I've ever heard of or ever seen did not run. I've gotten phone calls or I know a friend of a friend or my uncle or this has one of those cars. It's a 914. It hasn't ran in 10 years. Can you hook them up? It seems like all of them I've ever heard of are parked in a barn somewhere, not running. And I never get a chance to work on them because the people know they're not worth a whole lot. They don't want to put out a whole lot. It just really is not a very good car from the 70s, guys. So let's go ahead and move to the 80s. We are finished with the 70s. Come on, wizard. Oh, well, thank you. Yes, yes, let's get out of here. Uh, there you go. We had to move down here because I definitely wanted to get this sweet car in the shop before it leaves. I think it may be leaving today. It still has the plastic on it, waiting for the customer to pick it up, keeping the dust off of it. So we don't want to remove the plastic right now because the car's done. I don't want to mess with it. So are you Porsche purists ready for another gut punch from the car wizard? I've got another one for you. Not necessarily with this car, but the one that I will recommend not to buy, but let's get to that in a minute. In the era of the 1980s, again, if I had swimming in cash, if I was swimming in cash, the car that I would plunk down the cash for is the 1986, right there, Porsche 930 Turbo. It absolutely obliterates a standard 911. I mean, it's not even funny. It obliterates a standard 911. It is very fast. 911s are getting up there. These air-cooled ones, 60, 70, 80, 90 grand with this weird economic thing we're in. These are, could be up for over 100. This is really to buy. Even right now it is. It is very fast, like I mentioned. Zero to 60 in 4.5, the quarter mile, 13 flat. Now, with today's cars, obviously, that's not like, oh my God, fast. But for the 80s, it was blistering fast. It was like, whoa, fast. These have very beautiful lines. They have a little bit differences in them from a standard 911. In fact, you really should go back and watch the video of this. It'll be in the link below in the description. And you will get to check the underside, the engine, all the different angles of this car. You really should go check it out. It is beautiful. I mean, a 911, an air-cooled 911 is beautiful, but this one's even that much more beautiful. The, some of the changes they did to it, it's, it's wonderful. They're actually not that hard to work on. You just have to have an open mind, say so there's, there's no antifreeze, there's no radiator, the engine's in the back. As soon as you can get past all that stuff, it's time-consuming, but it's not super hard to work on. Now, if you can stomach 12 miles per gallon, then this is the car for you because you're going to get that or lower all the time. But this is not the car to buy anyway for economy. This is the car to blow your neighbor's IROC Z out of the water. These are really sweet, guys. The ones I recommend not to buy, Porsche 928. All of them. They're all junk. I don't like them. They don't look like Porsche. Well, they kind of look like a Porsche, but, and again, they don't. And again, that's a strong opinion. That's not based on Lap times is not based on engineering design. That's based on my opinion. I don't like them. Number one, the engine's in the wrong location for being a Porsche. It's in the front, like a Nissan 300Z, which could probably outrun any of them. It wasn't fast when it was new, and it still isn't today. Definitely not fast today. The several I've had in the shop, I take them out after they're fixed and give them the beans, because the customer says, I want you to give it the beans. I want you to drive it like I would drive it. So I do as they ask. And I'm just like, this is like a 5.0 1989 Mustang fast. It's okay, it's kind of fast, but I'm not impressed. I had more fun driving my Turbo S Beetle, or Tortle. It was way more fun. Again, they look hideous, they look like a frog, especially when their little pop-up eyeballs come up. They look like a frog ready to jump in the water. And of all the cars I've ever worked on in my life, it is the most requested barn resurrection request from customers. It seems like all of them are sitting in barns, broken, not running. They're usually guys that are in their 50s or older, because that was a sweet car when they were younger, so they finally got the money to buy one. They buy one, something goes wrong, and it sits. I think the prices are kind of high on those because there's so few running on the road anymore. Most of them don't run. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. And they're also the worst Porsche as far as customers wanting to put money into their car. You mean it's going to be $1,200? I don't have that. I'm thinking, what in the world are you doing with a Porsche? They're really hard to work on because of that reason. 
and usually they've been sitting in a barn for five years. Can you get it back on the road for me? And I have got several on the road. And all of my customers that I got their car back on the road after the money they seen that they spent on it, they have all said the same thing. You did a good job, Car Wizard. I'm happy with the results, but it wasn't worth it. If I could go back in time, I would not spend the money. It's not worth it. So based on those experiences, any and all of the 928s, just don't buy one. There's your gut punch, guys. Now, let's move on to the 1990s. Come on, wizard, let's go. All right. Man, there we go, dear. So now we're gonna to move to the 1990s, which is just like the silver one, Apollo 911, that's above on the lift. I'll bet it doesn't no longer have a Porsche engine, but that is the style of car we're going to talk about. I'm also going to deliver another gut punch. This is the third one. It's going to turn you guys' world upside down. I hope you're ready. The thing that I'm going to bring forth, the information I'm going to bring to you, was a problem even with Porsche 911 owners. When they bought 90s vehicles, they were really, really pissed off about this. Now, let's get started. The one I recommend to buy, a 1999 Porsche Boxster S. And you're like, come on, car wizard, it's just a Boxster. Hear me out. If you buy the Boxster, you get 90% of a Porsche 911 for 70% off the cost. This really pissed off the 911 owners in the 90s because from the rear of the door all the way forward, it was an identical, exact Porsche 911. You could take the doors off, you could take the dash out, you could take the strut, you could do all kinds of parts in the front of the car and it would bolt directly to a Porsche 911. It essentially was a Porsche 911, just with some reconfiguration and some changes in the back. The 911 guys were furious. They were like, I just paid triple what that car cost and I got maybe a little bit better of a car. I'm not happy about this. And of course, Porsche made some changes after that. They're decently fast, 0 to 60 in 5.6 and a quarter mile in 15s. Now, that's not super fast. I said it was decent fast. It's enough to have fun in, and the handling is amazing in these cars. The Porsche 911 is faster, but not 70% faster, as in the 70% increase in cost you're going to spend to buy one. To me, the Boxster handles better than the 911 because the engine sits forward of the rear wheels, not behind so it's less apt to do a fishtail, or wipe out, or oversteer, I guess, during hard cornering. If any of you have watched Car Issues, Hoovy's show that's actually on Motor Trend right now, a lot of the episodes are airing there, and there's another season coming. You guys need to get ready. It's gonna be on Motor Trend. He actually drove a black Boxster S. That was mine. I actually ended up with that car, but at the time it wasn't mine. But he wanted to do a burnout with the car for filming. And Hoovy's a pretty good driver, he really is. He may make himself to look crazy or goofy on his channel, but he's actually a really good driver. And he tried everything he knew to get this thing to do a burnout, and he ended up almost burning up the clutch. It would not do a burnout. And it wasn't because of lack of power, it's because it gripped and handled that good. He was amazed. He, was, he actually got out and slammed the door. He was like, I'm amazed. I cannot do a burnout on this thing. And I can on a 911, it's not, and it's not because of power. It's, it's just the way this thing is set up, it's amazing. The only downfall is it costs the same as a 911 to fix because it's basically the same engine, same parts. 911 is basically a 911. So based on that information, I can easily say the one not to buy is any of the 911s in the 1990s. And it isn't because they're a bad car. It is because the option is there for the Boxster that's almost as good for 70% the cost. You mean I shouldn't buy a 90s Porsche and LS swap it? No, you shouldn't. Because it, it would decrease the value. Obviously, this car is not worth what it could have been as a 911. If money's not an option, you just want performance and just to have fun, that's what this car is. That's what a Apollo 911 is. It's a fun car. Tyler has lots of fun with it. The power is amazing. He didn't do it for resale value. Obviously, he didn't. And when he originally bought it, it had over 100,000 miles. It had lots of miles on it, guys. So he didn't harm the car. He didn't hurt the value. So don't worry about that. Both the 986 and the 996 
911 or Boxster share the same IMS bearing problems and RMS seal issues. They both share that issue. You're not going to get away from that with either or, so you're going to have to bank. F if that hasn't been done on either car, it's going to have to be done at some point once you buy the car. One of the downfalls of the 911 is, like I just mentioned, 70% increase in price and double or possibly triple the insurance, depending on how old you are or your driving record. And if you're going to have to deal with those ugly front headlights, which they call the runny eggs, they look like eggs that have been fried and they're running down, you might as well go with a cheaper option, which is the Boxster. So if I offended you guys, I'm sorry, but based on what I've seen in the shop and driving these cars, the mo my money goes towards a Boxster in the 90s every time. Now we move to the 2000s, and at this time, I don't have anything from the 2000s as far as Porsche goes in the shop. Although I regularly do, I just don't happen to at the moment. The one I recommend to buy is 2009 Porsche Cayman S PDK. 320 horsepower and 275 pounds of torque, that's a lot of power for a small Porsche. Lots of power. 0 to 60 in 4.5, quarter mile in the low 13s, that's as fast as that 930 turbo we just looked at. And way less money. It has amazing looks to me. My opinion is it looks better than a 911. It just has amazing flowing lines that go all the way to the back. Better than a Boxster. It just looks amazing to me. I've been to a few Porsche meetups and I see the 911s. It's like, okay, I've seen five million of those. But when I see the Cayman, it's just like, that's refreshing. It looks so nice. In a sea of 911s, they look so nice. They're cheaper than a 911, which are going to be really high in the 2000s. And I know you guys say, oh, Wizard, I would go with a manual. My personal preference is I don't like shifting manuals. I will have to in the Ferrari 308, but I'm not going to drive the 308 five days a week. It'll be just for short excursions for fun or go to car shows, go out for a quick drive. I can handle a manual for that. But for everyday driving and be driving a, a Cayman a lot, I don't want to shift the manual. I get pissed off. No more Tiptronic, which is pretty junky. The PDK, though, is really nice. I've driven lots of Porsches with PDK. And if the option says, do you want manual or PDK, I will choose PDK every time. That's just my personal opinion. The one not to buy, any of the Porsche Panameras. I just wouldn't, I just don't like them. A four-door Porsche, and the styling is really bad. To me, it looks like a dog that's squatting and pooping. Like its hind quarters are up and it's doing its business. I just, I don't, I don't get, I can't flow with that. I don't like it. The V8s are kind of hard to work on. I've actually had one in here in the shop that it had oil pump problems. The oil pumps are electrically controlled, and it's a major teardown to get to it. And I was like, all for an electric valve. The oil pump still works fine. The oil pump is not failing. It's just an electrical valve that's going out, and it's going to be thousands and thousands of dollars. And I've, I've seen troubles with the V8s and the, and the Cayennes and different vehicles that use the V8s, and they are powerful and fast. But every single Porsche V8 I've ever set in at a red light never idles smooth. They all just, it's like it's misfiring. It's like, I just don't feel like this is a refined engine that's ready to, I mean, tear up the roads at the same time, cruise to the country club in smooth refinement. It just runs really rough. I never thought they were a very good engine. And if you buy a Panamera, you will always be that guy that has a Panamera. Somebody will mention so-and-so, have you met so-and-so before? He has a Porsche Panamera, and then you can watch the frown on their face. They're like, oh, God, he has a Panamera? Okay. And you immediately get knocked down a few rungs in coolness points. I don't know why that is, but I definitely would not own a Panamera. So don't do it, guys. Again, we don't have any of the 2010s or newer, so... We're just going to sit right here where we're at with Apollo 911 behind us because I really like Apollo 911. That project's coming up next. We've taken care of a lot of Hoovy's projects. That one's going to be pulled off the back burner and get to work on it. This is going to be a, the fourth and final gut punch for you guys that like Porsches. Or really any gas engine car, you're really not going to like this one. The one I recommend to buy in the 2010s or later, the 2019 Porsche Taycan, Taycan S, however you say it. However you say it, you can say it that way to yourself. That's how it's said. That's the one that I would buy. 
I know it's fully electric. But you guys know that I am very firmly supportive of electric cars, and I know eventually that will be sending my career to the wayside, but I think even Magic Mike will be retired before there's no more gas cars on the road. There'll always be some gas cars to fix, but I really am happy about the ushering in of the electric car, the electric era. Now, we've always had electric cars, and even in the 1900s and 20s and 10s, we had electric cars, but I'm talking about the type of electric cars we have today. Extremely fast, ludicrous speed fast, zero to 60 in 2.4, quarter mile in the low tens. That's almost dragster times, top fuel dragster. I mean, obviously there's some that are way faster than that, but that's getting into funny car times. And it's electric. To me, they're very gorgeous. They're a beautiful car. When we bought Mrs. Wizard's Maserati Levante, they actually had one on the lot, and we kind of drooled over it. We're like, wow, this is a sweet looking car. They really knocked it out of the park with the styling of this car. We actually kind of thought about buying it, but that's the next step in electric cars is just as well as there's a gas station at about every corner, even in this small town of Newton, they're going to have to have a charging station at every corner of small town America, big town America. It's going to have to have charging stations more than five places in the middle of Wichita. It's going to have to be a lot more. So we weren't ready to buy an electric car yet because of that. That's the only reason why. No more gas fumes, no more oil changes. And as far as speed goes, there really isn't very many gas-powered Porsches of any time, any era, that can keep up with this thing. Maybe some super-duper high-end, multi-million dollar Porsches. But for the money that you spend to buy one of these, there really isn't a gas-powered option that can even begin to keep up. It obliterates the competition as far as gas power goes. The one not to buy? Any of the Porsche Macans. Me and Mrs. Wizard actually looked to possibly buy one of these, and we were just astounded how tiny it was inside. It's so small. The back seats are almost unusable type small. They're very cheaply built. In fact, the interior is very reminiscent to me of a Volkswagen Tiguan. It is that low level. I mean, it's low, guys. It, it's not, for the money you're spending, you're not getting what you paid for. It's overpriced for what you're getting. You're just buying the emblem, the Porsche emblem on the front. And it has the Audi 2.0T, which has been very troublesome with timing chain troubles. And just like the Q5 that was in here, you, there's actually a video on that. We put a new turbo on for the lady. It was very expensive. That's a common problem with those engines. They're not good engines, guys. They're really not good engines. So if you're on the market for a Porsche, SUV, or a car, and you're in this year range, just don't buy a Macan. It's really not a good idea. And lastly, if you're looking for 2020 and newer, I don't get those in the shop because they're still under warranty. Why would you take it to the car wizard when you can get it fixed for zero money for free at the dealer? So being in that year range, buy anyone you want. It's still under warranty. You don't have to worry about what it's going to cost to fix it. Unless you buy one with high miles and it's expired the warranty because of the miles, don't buy any of them. Just buy that model you want with less miles, which still has a warranty on it. There's going to be a lot of parts on a 2021 or 2020 Porsche that really aren't on the aftermarket yet. You're not going to get parts for it other than only the dealer, if it has to be repaired and it's no warranty. So make sure to keep that in mind. If you're looking for a 2020 and it's under warranty, it doesn't matter which one you're gonna buy, really. Just make sure it still has a warranty. So it's been a long time since we've done a buy this, not that. I thought, why not just do one that's gonna throw you guys for a loop? Some of you guys and girls are gonna be really excited about what I said. Some of you are gonna be so angry, you're gonna make a paragraph long comment. Really, it doesn't matter to me because that's just my opinion on what I've seen in the shop, not based on driving it on a racetrack, it's based on what I've seen as a shop owner or a mechanic in a shop. Those are my opinions and what they're based on. So we've got many more projects to go. We have, still have the Ferrari as soon as we can get back to that. We've been super busy in the shop. We will be having a Ferrari video coming soon. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on these cars, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.